Welcome to Unbiased and Honestment. Sorry for the short intro for you guys just hopping into here, and uh, I'm super excited today. Today we bring back Buddhist author Von Galt to talk about the power of our Merkabas. Von explained in previous shows the science behind sacred geometry in our Merkabas, and in her recent book, Buddhist Mandalas, Explore Parallel Realities with Sacred Geometry, she explained how many sacred geometry symbols in many world religions speak about the same thing, which is that we are all energy. And, as energy beings, we are souls having a human experience on Earth. Today we are going to have some fun with our journey of awakening, ascension, and shifting further into the fifth dimension with Earth. Vaughn is introducing the $1 trillion spiritual challenge I hope you guys are ready. Game on. Let's play. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be so exciting. I have, uh, thank you again, Shane and everyone in the Mandela Effect community. Love you all uh, from bringing the material. And so we're going to unchartered areas here. We're taking it, you know, when you're ready, we're going to level you up. So I think you guys are ready for the one trillion dollar Merkaba challenge, and for new people who are coming in and and you know just just stepping into this space, we'll fill in some blanks for you as well, um, so you can get caught up. But um, basically, yeah. So I really like to kind of start the game with um, kind of a. Like the price is right, but for copyright, I'm just going to, <laughs> I'm just going to um, d do the the intro. So here it goes. Da 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 So that's our game show um, intro. But um, so let me introduce the one trillion dollar challenge for high frequency individuals here on planet spaceship earth and uh, yeah and this is going to be like next level if you are really into your spiritual development and take it all the way you and your merkaba you might actually have the one trillion dollar value merkaba and Anybody can have it. It's just a matter of working on your inner self and raising your frequency. And if your frequency is high enough, you might have the magical voice that opens up a $1 trillion treasure for India. Wow. Yeah, awesome. that's, a, that's a big, that's a big tall order. But um, no one on this planet so far has been able to open up those magical doors to this one temple that has a trillion dollar suspected fortune because their Merkaba was not high enough. And lucky for us, I've spent the last 20 years studying Merkabas and the science behind it. So I explained that in previous um, presentations in the, the book that you just introduced. And there's two more books um, that will be coming out as soon as I'm done making them as well that go further into this as well. But um, so far, no one that I have seen in this space actually able to put the pieces together to explain what is needed to open up this $1 trillion treasure door. So I'm going to explain to you what it is based on my understanding on the clues that are written right in front of you all over this temple. It actually tells you what it needs from your Merkaba to open up that magical vault that has a trillion dollar fortune behind it. Wow. Okay. So the Merkaba is uh, something we all have, right? It's this energy field. It's like our the ship for our consciousness, I guess some people think of it that way. Is, is there any better way of explaining it? That's basically it. Um, okay. the, your Merkaba is your energy's light body. It is your energy. It's your aura field. It's your chakras. It's your 
so it's your, you know, whatever. There's so many different words for your Merkaba. In Buddhism, they call it your Buddhist mandala. Judaism, they call it your Merkaba. In Hinduism, they call it your Sri Yantra. In Zen, they call it your Yin Yang energy. Um, in Native American, they call it your whirling log for the spinning wheel mm. that the master teacher comes yeah. or, or the controversial word, swastika. Right. <laughs> Um, another hijack symbol <laughs> another hijack symbol unfortunately yeah. but it's very very old and ancient and it basically is that energy field around you that every single person has and um i've proven the science behind it in my book buddhist mandalas book one but that that is your merkaba and that is your physical scientific evidence that every single person living on this planet and other planets and every sentient being in creation has an energy field. And that energy field can either evolve or devolve depending on their inner spiritual work and their level of consciousness. So as they awaken to the greater reality that they they are a spirit or soul having a physical experience as a human here in this case on earth that this whole f reality is basically a game for the consciousness as they realize and have that awakening that they are someone that has realized that they exist in a holographic reality mm -hmm. that is responding to the commands of his user which results in conscious creating both individually and collectively. And so that is the basic premise. So you have your awakening and then you start having your Mandela effects, which is what many people in this community have, which very, <laughs> very simply, and I've had a couple of interviews where people challenge me on Mandela effects because Mandela effects, personal shifts in one reality versus another, which, you know, Shane, you did a wonderful job in your book, um, Mandela Effect, Friend or Foe, oh, based on, you. yeah, based on, um, you know, the commercial logos changing and, and what people, all these collected people remember one version, but it doesn't exist in the reality that they're in mm -hmm. now, which is a physical evidence of consciousness of millions of people who have no skin in the game and don't know each other have vivid recall separate from one another of the same thing that does not exist in this reality. And it's not just that, but it's also um, as we get further into awakening and level up our energy or ascend in our mm -hmm. energy, we also have our own personal Mandela effects where uh, things that you remember in your personal life is different than before. I actually do QHHT um, through the Dolores Cannon method, who she's, there's plenty of wonderful practitioners on the website, DoloresCannon.com. And I have clients come in w trying to make sense of their Mandela effects where they had a tattoo on one leg and now the tattoo is on the completely other leg. <laughs> and they're going, how does this happen? And, it, and so I had to explain to them all this wonderful information through Buddhism that I know of and apply it in this modality to explain to them that their consciousness, they did something in their reality, the change and did some inner work. They leveled up their energy, um, probably by removing an abundance box or something that's pulling down the energy and their consciousness raised up a level. And so it shifted to the next parallel reality that is higher frequency that matches them. So the consciousness travel from reality A, where they had the tattoo on the right leg, to the parallel version of their body in reality B, where they actually decided to make the tattoo on the left leg. And that's why the tattoo's on the left leg. And that would follow how um, other people have reported, like, I had a scar on my right leg and now it's on my left. It's like you just got injured a little bit differently than before. And, you know, Angela, uh, one of our viewers who does massage on people, she's 
reported several times that, you know, she's talked to somebody about a new tattoo, but it wasn't new or one that's changed because she notices them. And so, yeah, so either that person shifted or she shifted into another version where that person had a little bit different tattoo or something. Yeah, (laughs) and that's also a fun game for the consciousness to play with your friend, to be like, well, which version are you? Which reality do you come from? You know, kind of play a little, um, you know, peekaboo, hide and seek with consciousness and reality. So it's like, it's like falling in love. Like try to explain this to somebody else. You can you can read all the books and you can study what it's like to be in love, but you really it's still not real to you. And then you fall in love for the first time, and then it's real because you have firsthand experience, and nobody can tell you any different. And that's exactly it. Uh, your personal Mandela effect and the changes in your reality um, is like your first-hand experience of falling in love or falling further into the fifth dimension or into a, a different parallel reality. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just just in short, you have your awakening, you're working on your ascension, and you're working on leveling up your frequency. And um, as you level up your frequency and your level of consciousness, your Merkaba, that energy field that you are, Mm -hmm. Uh, Because our bodies are just our sims for the game and the role that we play within the game. Mm -hmm. But your Merkaba is the same Merkaba, lifetime after lifetime, if you choose to reincarnate into one reality versus another, etc. Or even after you die and in between lives and stuff, right? Isn't it something? Exactly. It's It's your real real body. Right. The real you is energy. Right. The real you is energy. And so that's why uh, when you go into past life or future life or life between life regressions or hypnosis through QHHT or BQH or any of the other modalities that are out there, you're going to have all these different lifetimes where you your sim has changed. You've become a man. You've become a woman. you become black. you become white. you become handicapped, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on. The you know, the roles and the storyline may have changed that you're playing into, mm-hmm. but um, you, in order to go to the next experience, if you created, uh, if you created karma, mm-hmm. unbalanced issues between different people, when you come back, that's why lifetime after lifetime, you still work on the dense issues so that you can overcome it not create it again and then move on to creating better things for you so lifetime after lifetime what you really are is your merkaba and they've proven this in science so i just Uh, want a quick question a a, a quick question with that do you think when we capture some of these orb photos those are spirits those are actually merkabas and they're just spinning so fast they appear as an orb maybe yeah because we are orbs we just happen to incarnate into a physical body but there are energy beings in the spirit that never incarnate like your angels Mm -hmm. you know so they um, can appear like a a little orb but they're much more than that of course but that's all we perceive in the 3d i guess right yeah yeah and there's plenty of youtube videos i had somebody actually send me a youtube video because she captured a spinning merkaba an energy orb that spins a merkaba in the same exact description that was written in my book. That's why she reached out to me. And it was changing colors. It was changing size. And she had it on YouTube. And um, and it's like, that's a, that's a Merkaba. That's an energy being. You are an energy being. You just happen to incarnate into a physical body. And that one didn't. Wow. You know, it, it brings to, to mind some of those uh, super slow motion cameras that, um, you know, they'll show something hitting a watermelon and it exploding in super duper slow motion. Wouldn't that be cool to capture an orb on there where you can slow it down enough to actually see the, you know, the geometric patterns kind of forming and spinning, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm Because I think it's just happening so fast, it looks like an orb to us. But if you could slow it down, if you could reduce the frequency to what we're used to in this 3D reality, then you might be able to see it, you know, kind of transposing into making it where we can see it you know that's exactly it. and that's that's a difference in density in order to go into lower dense realities um they have to slow their energy field and slow their spin mm-hmm. slow the slow you know they have lowered their consciousness they have to lower their energy field and that's why oftentimes like um even when people have near-death experiences you know and they and they talk to people on the other, on the other side or um 
even if they talk to quote unquote aliens in higher mm-hmm. dimensions, they always say the same thing. It's very hard for us to stay in this communication because we have to lower our frequency, our Merkabas, so far down in order to have communication with you because we're so far up here in terms mm-hmm. of energy. So all, it's all about energy. And, and that reminds me of Bashar saying he has to actually meet them halfway mm-hmm. to have the wonderful connection that he has and where he's able to channel them so clearly. He's kind of got a, they, they taught him to raise his frequency so that they don't have to drop so far down. So. Yeah, and they're still dropping really, really far down in order to just get to a baseline mm-hmm. to communicate mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. So you're doing all this work to raise your frequency and they're still dropping down. <laughs> but Luckily, as I will show you in the presentation, we have entered the fifth dimension and we're going further into the parallel fifth dimension. And so Earth is actually helping us raise that frequency so that we can get to those higher levels and make those communications much, much easier with beings of higher dimensions like quote, quote, aliens or your angels, um, you know, your neighbor actually might be your angel in disguise, but they never manifested in your reality because you were low frequency until you get to a higher frequency and all of a sudden you have a new neighbor and a new house in your neighborhood that wasn't there before. <laughs> so, or, or, or something else I've heard about is um, co-workers kind of falling away all of a sudden, you know, those lower vibe co-workers. So hang in there, you guys. <laughs> yeah, definitely hang in there. And, and again, as we have proven with the Mandela Effect community, you're not alone. Even if you, there's plenty of people that you talk to in your circle, or whatever, who, you know, maybe not have the the type of experiences or haven't had enough personal Mandela Effect um, experiences. It doesn't matter because like I, like we have proven over and over again, there are parallel realities and there are parallel people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when, like when somebody in your family or your friends are ready to raise their level of consciousness and raise and ascend up to the higher levels of energy, they will all of a sudden pop into the higher parallel version of themselves and go, mm-hmm. oh my God, Shane, has this always been around? I just, this is new to me. And they're going to kind of freak out. Oh, I've been waiting for you to get here. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and they will be like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I denied the whole thing. I'm so sorry, but I need you to help me adjust. And you'll get that. You'll get that where people are like all of a sudden pop into their higher version of themselves in a higher reality and need some adjusting. And now the person that they were kind of poo-pooing is the only person they can work with and talk to about adjusting. So hang in there, everybody. (laughs) We're all going to make it at some point. It's going to be a bumpy ride for some people. So... Yeah, that is funny how, you know, you don't hear from people until weird stuff starts happening. And then all of a sudden you're the person they call, right? You're the person they call and you're like, and you're like, I don't know, you really poo-pooed me and really, really was not a pleasant experience. <laughs> so you're going to have to really get on my good graces on this one. So, you know, but it's fine. It, it, and this will be experienced in every single one in, in the Mandela Effect community as we go further into the fifth dimension and more mass awakenings start happening because the higher energy will force people into mass awakenings um it it you know everybody's going to be called on to help so- somebody so um yeah so just just hang in there i actually actually had a mandela effect uh yesterday uh my personal one my husband and i went to a restaurant that we um enjoy for a lunch date and we were just there about a month ago having lunch because they opened up 20% capacity in the restaurant. So we were just there having pho like a month ago. Um, And we go in, it's the same gal who runs the place and it's completely closed off for dine-in, just pick up and delivery. And we say, what happened? Did they shut you guys back down? Did you guys have to go back to phase one? And they're like, no, we've always been shut down. We've never opened for dining. I mean, we're like, uh, uh-uh. uh, no, we were just sitting there. You served us. <laughs> right. When did that happen? Okay. So that's funny. Cause I experienced the restaurant shift in the same time period. Oh, it was oh about, my goodness. Yeah. It was about a month ago. Oh we, my God. Uh, we had checked two locations of a restaurant here and one of them opened at nine. So we decided to go ahead and go to that one, even though it was a little bit further of a drive mm-hmm. instead of waiting until 11. Mm-hmm. So we went there, we ate, it was, you know, it was fine and everything. We went to go like a couple of weeks later and the sign looks as if they don't open till 11 and the the sign was all wrinkled and stuff like they haven't opened you know since they reopened they hadn't opened before 11 so 
Yeah, so same time same frame. Same thing. Yeah, same, same time frame. frame. That was about a month ago. That was a month yeah. ago for us, too. Yeah, yeah. It was so funny. And the lady's looking at us, and we're like, look at her. And my husband and I look at each other, and, and we're like, we got our food. We got in the car, and we're like, did we go up in the reality, or did we go right. down? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I wonder that, too. I always we're wonder like, that, too. Uh, how is it that we're going? Is, is this a lower reality? And, this right. opinion, and he saw us like, well... There must be somebody in our sphere of influence that we're trying to help pull up. And so I'm like, okay, I'll take that. I'll take that one. I'll take that right. one. <laughs> but, but we're like looking at each other going, parallel people. Yeah. But it could also be, it could just be you moved. Uh, it could be a parallel movement, right? And yeah. they just happened to not open. They decided not to. And nothing was really worse or anything. They just, I don't It was know. just another version. Another yeah, version. Just another choice made a little bit differently. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so we we were like, what do we do differently? So that's the game that people in the, you know, who have reality shifts or right. uh, parallel realities, where they're kind of like, okay, do we go up? Do we go down? <laughs> what decision do we make different to change your energy to go to this one and change the trajectory? So we kind of like play a little bit of you know, roll the dice a little bit. Right. So that's another game. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. I yeah, look but, at it as it's momentum, though. I look at it as change is momentum. Momentum is expansion, and it's, you know, it's movement. It's it's momentum. So I, I look yeah. at it as a good thing. Change is good. Yeah, I've had people, I don't know if you had this, but we're going to get into the trillion dollar challenge, people, so it's okay. <laughs> but I've, I've looked at, I've looked at, I mean, so we've had that. I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of parallel realities for this whole pandemic and a lot of parallel outcomes. And I am shifting and noticing these nuances. And that was the most recent one. That was yesterday. Um, the other one that I have noticed is time slips where you look at the clock and all of a sudden three hours go by, you just blinked, you know? And so I've seen people um, who have messaged me because, you know, everybody, you know, throws this stuff away until they have their personal experience and then they're looking around for anything. And so I've had people, you know, since I started doing these interview circuits would, would message me, I got something to story tell you, I did this time slips and then, you know, all of a sudden I was here and then I was here. <laughs> or um, I, I thought I woke up like I normally wake up and then all of a sudden I lost four hours of time. I don't know what happened. I just watched the clock and it literally went back two hours. I just blinked and went back two hours so there's a lot of these time dilation that's going on right now and uh, and that's tweaking people out mm -hmm. and uh, and the most of them are in the space it's, it's really waking them up or it's really accelerating the, the process of ascension to the fifth dimension so um, so there is some merging there's some diverging of timelines um, there are people who pop in there are people who pop out you know, you know it's going to sort itself out but um, just, you know, be fluid with it. Just kind of like the restaurant thing. It's like, oh, okay, you're closed today. <laughs> right, right. Just play along. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course you've always been closed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've had people who, like, the restaurant's not even there anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. Yeah, the restaurant's not even there anymore. It's been vacant. Nothing's ever been built in that spot. Yeah, or so, seeing a sign change, but it doesn't look brand new, but you know it's different and it still looks worn. Like it's always been that way. I've noticed a few things like that that are kind of uh, strange. Yeah. You know I, mean? I have noticed that while going to a place and I'm just kind of like, they're like, can I help you? I'm just kind of like, <laughs> just checking. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's actually two things before we get to your presentation I wanted to ask you about because it's it's been going around and I, I like to get the word out about it, but it's um, extreme anxiety that, that just comes on really strong, right? And it's um, for some people it's in the head, some people it's it's located around the heart, just feeling that uh, extreme anxiety. The way I've experienced it, it comes on really quick and I have to take some conscious breaths and it almost goes away just as quick as it comes in. And it's sort of like you're just transmuting that energy as it comes in or something. I don't know what it is, but it, the deep breathing helps, the conscious breathing and just taking a moment. Um, and like I said, it's been, even my daughter, I've had other people sending me emails. It's happening from people in their teens all the way, you know, into their 60s and 70s. So it's not like an age thing. It's clearly something going on with the energies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, you know that day that, in, on, I think it was April 4th, that they had the Worldwide Meditation? Mm-hmm. Um, and 
there was a visible spike in the Schumann residence. It actually mm -hmm. went to, I think it was went up as high as 110 hertz from 7.83. Wow. So I mean, it, she really responded to the to that one. But um, yeah, the the whole pandemic has because it's a worldwide event that's happening around at the same time with everybody in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody's really connected and we're sending out all this anxiety and the stress and this frustration and, you know, X, Y, Z emotions and everybody's feeling it at this time. So, um, you know, it's, it's disorder. We're just feeling mm -hmm. it. My, my neck, had, my, I, I go to the chiropractor like every week now, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a massage and, and everything else because my neck has just been going crazy. Every single time we have a collective, I call it a collective riot, um, or a collective protest, uh, my neck goes crazy. So um, everybody's anxiety is surging through the whole ethers. And so we're all feeling it. We're all feeling all of the... Well, what I noticed, though, that I think is important for people to notice, if, if you're already sort of anxious about maybe money or whatever it is, I mean, we, we all have times when we're nervous or anxious about things. If you're already experiencing that and then you get hit with this, then you can sort of feel like it's your own anxiety coming mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's really the thing I want to get out there to people is to realize, because unless you're centered and you know, like, you know, you have no reason to feel anxious, but, and then right. you get hit with it, then it's obvious that this is external coming in. But if yeah. you're already in that, resonating in that, and then you get hit with it, oh my gosh, probably panic attack time, right? Because it's pretty intense. It is very intense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, th very, very good distinction. Um, if the anxiety you're feeling has to do with your potential job or the bills or you, your own personal mm -hmm. issues or things that you're dealing with in your life that mm -hmm. came on, then definitely work on that and try to find um, ways to kind of, you know, go to nature walks. It's really easy. Take the dog out, go for mm -hmm. long extended nature walks or whatever mo modalities of meditation that really helps you kind of calm your nerves. Um, exercising helps for a lot of people, et cetera, et cetera. But if you don't have any of those things going on in your life, and for the most part, you're pretty stable and you still feel that, then it's the collective. All right. You're feeling it in the in the collective um, consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or you might be feeling it in the collective of your personal family and friends, mm -hmm. and you're you're kind of empathic and you're picking up on their energy. Right, which can happen, especially when we're all locked in the house together. Oh. Or, I know some people are like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I've heard know. stories. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So whatever way in which it comes in, the anxiety and the panic and the really immense depression about life, because um, I'm a pretty happy person, but sometimes I'm like, I'm in this funk and I feel really sad. I like, want to cry. I don't know why, because I have nothing to cry about. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. so you can feel that too. So whatever the energy comes on to you, um, find your method of releasing pent up energy, whether it's meditation, art, gardens, going to sleep, nature walks, whatever it is that gets you into that gamma wave frequency, mm -hmm. that's going to really help you out because um, it's not for you to internalize these energies because they turn into sickness in the body. So, you know, release those those dense energies and, and let it go. And so it and you can actually up. transmute that anxiety into excitement because real similar feelings. It's just sort of your state of mind when you're experiencing it. Mm -hmm. So like we were talking about wanting to hoot and holler before you go live because you got all that energy and you're just ready to do it, <laughs> you know, and you can feel it. And I don't know. It's just, you know, and it's just like it's a positive thing. And, and you can take that other energy and transmute it into something exciting and good for mm -hmm. you, you know. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. <laughs> 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 We're ready to do this, aren't we? Yeah, let's go into our trillion dollar market buzz. Awesome. Okay. All right, so I am going to share my screen. Pull that thing on. Okay. All right. So, do you see my screen here? Yeah. All right. There, it just popped up. Perfect. The okay. Trillion dollar Merkaba. Mm hmm. So, the name of the game is Do You Have the One 
trillion dollar Merkaba. So let's get into this challenge. It's the ultimate challenge for spiritual people. I need some sound effects. <laughs> you should make some sound effects. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you do like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every time I get done with one, you do the sound effect and then I'll roll into the next one. <laughs> All right. I'll be like your Vanna White. Okay. Yes, yes, this. yes. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to actually do that back again. All right. Go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? is the one trillion dollar challenge so take a look at this people this is the challenge there's one trillion dollars hidden inside a vault in this ancient indian temple and mm. the reason why it is gold all over is because the makers of this temple um actually covered it with gold so all of the exterior is solid gold. So intricate and beautiful. Uh-huh. And basically, this temple is called the Sri Anatta Padmanabha Swami Temple. So I'm going to kind of... So if you guys look at all those different images, okay, different images, they have the clues on how to get into this trillion-dollar magical doorway written all over the decoration of this temple so as you can see you have giants statues and you have smaller statues in doing different things you have a lion's face right above the doorway at the bottom center mm -hmm. um so just keep that in mind. We're going to go into that. And no one in India has been able to break the code as to how to get into this trillion dollar fortune that this family takes care of. So, the, wow. yeah. And, it, and it's magical because it, you know, when the sun hits it, it's all a gold covered temple. So it really shines through. Yeah. But the Sri Anatta Padmanabha Swami temple, the temple is basically a Hindu temple that is dedicated to Lord Vishnu. Mm -hmm. And it's located in the Thiruvannathapuram, Kerali, India. So I might get some of these um, names not perfectly accurate. So forgive me. But basically the shrine is currently run by a trusted head by the royal family of the Travancore family. And the principal deity, which is Padmanabha Swami, he is enshrined in the Anantha Sayanam posture, which is the eternal sleep of Yogi Nidra on the serpent Anantha. So basically he's in the, this eternal sleep. So the takeaway again is they built this temple a long time ago for Lord Vishnu. And um, over time, different empires would come through and they would provide gifts and offerings to Lord Vishnu. And they would often be in the form of gold. So this is how they acquired so much money. The other thing about this to notate is, uh, it, this is a 16th century Kerala temple, again, located in India. And it used to be the royal chapel of the Travancore's former rulers. However, the oldest treasures date back to 200 BC. And the treasure that has accumulated for thousands of years. They don't really know exactly how old this temple is. But it is the richest temple in the world. Also, the Travancore family and the country of India... They opened five of the six vaults that are inside of this temple a couple years ago, to, just to take inventory of what's inside. And they found $22 billion worth of gold treasure inside. And that's only five of the six vaults that they were able to open up. So what does 
$22 billion of treasure look like? So that's here's it? some. That's what they found, right there. That's what they found, mm -hmm. and there's more. This is only just a couple of it, but um, Dr. Aj Aja Kumar Verma, he detected small cavities and drains around cellars that they found insignificant, and Chamber B is not is not part of the temple's official treasury. So the holy chamber that houses the idols of gods and many other valuables to enhance the potency of the, the deity that this temple was built for. In an inventory list in on August of 2014 um, from the looted vault A, it noted that this, the chamber still contained over 2,000 pounds of gold coins dating back to around 200 BC. And the valuables are believed to have been accumulated in the temple vaults over several thousand years and having been donated to the gods by various dynasties and kings. So that's how they accumulated a lot of this stuff. And so they found lots of coins from different dynasties. They found um, Bulan. They found lots of jewelry. They found this um, statue, completely gold statue of the deity that they made this temple for, and um, amongst a huge list of stuff out of those five vaults that they opened up to take inventory. Do you know how big that is? Is that like life size? It is life size. Okay. Yeah. So this is kind of a, gives you an idea of the $22 billion treasure that they found. Um, and again, they found that some of it was potentially looted. And they still had that much. What they also found was a gold chair for an 18 feet tall giant. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a big chair. <laughs> so, um, so that kind of goes into the mythology of um, ancient peoples being giants <laughs> and the ancient rulers and um, lords being uh, giants, which actually goes into another book that I want to get back into, which is um, Pyramids, Megaliths, and Tribal Folklores of uh, Lemuria. So um, as soon as I'm done with the three volume set of Buddhist mandalas, I can finally go back to that one. But this is a very interesting um, connection there because this is a completely gold covered um, completely gold, not just gold cover, a completely gold chair. And it was meant for whoever this um, temple is made for, for his side, supposedly. So that's one of the biggest finds that they found there. And also what they also found was, again, with this golden throne, it was adorned with hundreds of diamonds and fully precious stones meant for seating a past giant that, again, would be 18 feet or taller. So, um, because they inspected the ins and outs and everything else. I guess you don't know how much that chair weighs, do you? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, have to, they have to create it with, like, huge um equipment to move that thing oh, I bet. around yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is huge that is a huge uh find that, that alone is worth an unknown amount um but so that was vault a that's the five chambers in vault a within the gold temple so um vault b is where the mystery lies because Vault B is sealed by sound waves, okay? And um, this is some of the images that was released of Vault B. I'm not sure if they're their exact image or not, um, but this is what was released. So this is the door that goes to Vault B. And when they inspect the temple um, on the underground chambers, and that's how they noticed that some of the, the treasure may have possibly in the past been looted from Vault A and those five chambers that they were able to account for. Um, there is no way into Vault B in the under-level under, um, passageway. 
So there's no way in. So they looked under the temple, side, up, down. It's completely sealed out. And when what is interesting, what the challenge is about Vault B is unlike any other doors, and they inspected this pretty good, um, the, the country of India and the Travancore family, there are no welding marks. There are no bolts, no nuts, no cracks of any kind that can indicate a way to wedge in and open those doors. Okay, it is completely sealed by sound waves. Interesting. Yeah. And, 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 and so then you're probably wondering, why don't they just bang it open? You know, mm. bang it open, pry it open. The, the, the reason why they don't is, one, they do not want to hurt the temple walls by prying into the vault. Okay? So it, it, it's still precious to them. Uh, it's a national monument. So they, they want to make sure it's still intact for the architecture and the history. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that the people are fearful that if they open it manually, it will unleash the worst catastrophe to the world. Mm. That's the mythology. So, um, the, you know, the, they are suspicious about that. So since nobody and, and the mythology that has been passed and the folklore that's been passed down the generations in this area of India has been exactly that. Don't go into a temple. You're going to unleash the worst catastrophe to the world. So, um, so what? That's why they waited so long. And then a couple of years ago, they decided, okay, let's go and just take inventory of Vault A. So um, that's why they don't manually pry into Vault B. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the folklore that's been passed down the thousands of years and generations about um, this precious doorway and vault is that the safe way to open it is through um, reciting a, uh, a mantra, okay? The safest way, again, to open this vault B that was passed down through folklore is that down the generations is to have a sadhu, which is um, an Indian word for someone who is enlightened mm -hmm. and of high frequency that has the powerful voice mm -hmm. that can recite the Garunda mantra chant, which supposedly the voice of a highly evolved enlightened being in, in this dimension, saying this chant supposedly has the power to emit a sonic vibration that opens up the door chambers. Kind of like sesame. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was just wondering that. Has anybody tried to sing Open Sesame and see what happens? Open Sesame. <laughs> now, before I go into the next one, because there have been many yogis that have tried and failed. Mm -hmm. And this is why I say this is where, um, this is the trillion dollar challenge that will make you or break you and see how spiritual you are. So mm -hmm. if you have robes or if you have a certain spiritual title or religious title, if you know, blah, 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 however spiritual you think you are, prove it. So let me ask you this. If, if you do, you walk up to it, you sing a little song, the, it opens up, it's all yours? Well, it's the Trav and Course family. You will actually help them out, and you mm -hmm. will help the country of India out to be able to open up this magical doorway, um, you know, safely. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if you so, do ha so, have so, that. So, I mean, it's a catch-22 here, Vine, because uh -huh. what I see here is the only kind of person that would open that is someone that would be on – you know, ego, and the only reason that anybody would want to open it is for ego, right? Not necessarily, not necessarily. Somebody who opens it would open it up for the Travancore family, and it's, it's possession of the Tra Travancore family. And if they choose to, they can use that money to help um, the impoverished of India. Hmm. So it, it, it opens up um, the potential solution to help the people of India out of poverty. Well, that's so funny because Silver Moon just said that. Too bad they don't use that money for the poor people in India. So many <laughs> poor people there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Silver Moon, go open the door. You can do it. Go you open can the save door. the people of India. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> but 
again, it would prove again um, that everybody has a different energy signature and a different level and power in their energy. So it would prove the Merkaba um, and the whole point of this whole game of physicality, souls incarnating into physicality, is to play this game of life in creation and eventually work your way up to the final doorway where you let go of the game of creation and you go into nirvana. And, you know, many Buddhists will say nirvana is that empty state of um, consciousness, of the, ent- the emptiness of spirituality. It's the eternal slumber. Mm-hmm. It's just that zero point where there's no high, there's no low. It's just this internal blissful slumber that you just feel. Mm-hmm. And very few souls will um, completely release ego and release their addiction to coming back to play the game and whatever game it is, whether it's being a uh, fifth dimensional earthling or being an alien at Andromeda or whatever game out there that they want to play. Very few souls will want to let go of the whole game. Mm-hmm. and go into nirvana so that eternal sleep um and that's where many avatars like yeshua ben yosef tara buddha etc um kuan yin um when they do they go there they go to nirvana to get mm-hmm. reabsorb with the consciousness of the oversoul so that's the buddhist philosophy on that so here's the thing before i go to the next one i want you guys to notate the clues okay the clues mm-hmm. so if you look at the image Okay, you have the dragons that go around the door. Mm-hmm. Okay, and those are fifth dimensional dragons. We've seen that plenty. Kuan Yin likes to, that's her chariot of choice. Okay, and then um, if you look to the artwork and the image on the right with the yogi, mm-hmm. and it's the same thing, but if you look way above where the two snakes or dragons kind of like, Revere, there's mm-hmm. a mandala there. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's a mandala. And if you count those points, there are um, eight spokes. Mm-hmm. Okay, kind of like eight different spokes. That's sacred geometry. So notate that. That's the eight spoke mandala. Mm-hmm. Okay? okay, so that's what I've noticed so far. Now, the window on the left of the image on the right, the that archway, is that a palindrome word there? It looks like Spartan or something. Is that a word or is that just another coiling snake on the archway? On the archway, it's a coiling snake. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, the it, yeah, so this is the images that we release. Is it a dragon or a snake on the doors? And mm-hmm. then definitely a huge anaconda um, or dragon on the columns. Let me ask you this really quick. Is is the tail, the snake, is that all one beast? Is like the tail of the dragon, the snake head? Is that spiraling down the column and becoming the snake at the other end? Is that all uh, one? Like, like, like if it's a two-headed snake that's one? Yeah. one. I don't know about that. I don't it know. It kind of like it could be the same one. But, it could be. Okay. It could be. Um, the... I'm not really into snakes per se, but Vishnu was really into snakes, and in India, they're really into taming the snake. It's kind of like a challenge to tame the beast. Mm -hmm, Be the beast master. Like, you're so high frequency, you're so um, high energy that even the the feared snake or anaconda will be subservient to your energy. So it's kind of like the beast master challenge. Right. So that's that, that's the big thing about snakes in um in this um iconography. Cool. Okay, let's go to the next one. So many monks and yogis have tried. They have tried. Okay, so what you see here is this is um Sri Narendra Modi, and he's a highly spiritual yogi from India who, like many before him, has failed to have the Merkaba to open the sixth door. Okay? And that's the, that's the man doing the praying. And so what many yogis do instead is they would just, you know, have a blessing or just kind of prayer to, um, to the temple that, you know, maybe someday a highly enlightened person will have the Merkaba to say those magic words and open the door. Um, so they just, you know, they, they send lots of positive energy and prayer. The man on the right, um, the other yogi there, with the the signs on his forehead, um, mm-hmm. that's T.P. Sun Ragan, and and he initiated the legal battle for transparency 
in preservation and protection of the assets of the temple. So um, it, the temple, again, is managed by the trust under the um, Travancore royal family. And the Travancore royal, royal family, um, they had a little battle with the country of India for total ownership of the temple and its assets um, because... It was always in the royal family's um, estate to protect and caretake this facility. But then the country of India um, decided they might be better to be in a state of the country. And so they went through an illegal battle. And literally, I think it was this month, um, the Indian Supreme Court uh, ruled that it still belongs to the family and all its assets. So it's a big win for the family. Um, but many... So that's the that's the gentleman, the yogi that um, won and started the League of Battle too. You know what? We have this golden temple. Um, it has all this folklore. Let's go into the temple and let's take an inventory of what's inside. Let's take an inventory and make sure that you know we have what we have. And that's how they came into um, the twenty-two billion dollars of treasure that they found on those five vaults and learned about the temple that there are caverns that go into the other vaults, but there are no caverns um, that go into vault six, that it's completely sealed by sound waves. So that's how they discovered that was through this, this yogi and his efforts with his, the family to take inventory. So again, many yogis um, have offered prayers for a safe opening when a highly spiritual teacher opens it with their voice. And again, there are so far there have been no sadhus or enlightened high energy people or person so far who have the powerful voice to recite the Garunda Mandra mantra chant that emits the sonic vibration that opens up uh, Vault B safely. So the challenge carries on to everyone, I'm <laughs> just getting a little bit bold here. The challenge goes on to everyone in the Vatican, all monks in all faiths, all nuns in all faiths, all priests in all faiths, all spiritual people who are working on their awakening, ascension and development into a high energy. The challenge goes on is do you have the one trillion dollar Merkaba that can help them out. So they know for sure it's a single person because Kate brought up a, a pretty good point here. What if it's a group thing? What if it's ah, a right? that's a good one. <laughs> maybe why not? Right. It, it you just have to have the, the unity of it, maybe. You know. Yeah, you just have. To, nobody knows the um. What the sonic frequency? What you know? What it is? But if it were, because people have gone up to it and recited one mantra to another mantra, one Garunda mantra to another Garunda mantra, and different people have tried. And it just looks at you and doesn't do anything. So like, oh, I'm just going to send out a blessing <laughs> and, and move on. <laughs> so they've tried, and they tried different chants, they tried different things. Um, and you can actually go to the temple. It's actually open to the public, you, it, you know, to, to view. So you can go to the temple, um, and you can go and view the temple. And I don't know if you can actually go to Vault B because of 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 that. But um, if you make enough of a case that you might have that that you're highly spiritual enough, and you might have the Merkaba that can possibly open it up, um, I'm sure the Travancore family would be willing to listen and hear you out because so far, no one's been able to help them. So why not you? So. Um, Many yogis have tried and still try. So this is, again, a challenge for really highly spiritual people in the fifth dimension. This is the ultimate challenge so far. So maybe our next UOTF get together in 2021 needs to be there. <laughs> that would be so much fun. <laughs> Everybody just line up. <laughs> you know what would be funny? If you say open sesame, it opens up. <laughs> it would be hilarious. Maybe the greatest. I mean, just, like, that's just how it works. Jane, you're the Vishnu. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. So more clues, more clues. And again, no one has been able to put the pieces together. So I studied the artwork, you know, because I've been studying Buddhist mandalas for most of my life growing up and the last 20 years for this book. 
And so I'm very familiar with Merkabas and mandalas. And I look at the architecture because that's how you oftentimes in Asian times, literacy kind of comes happen sometimes in certain cultures. Um, knowledge doesn't necessarily always get passed um, and, and keep. And so um, what I have learned from the monasteries growing up is that a lot of the tribal folklores and the history gets of the culture and knowledge gets passed into tribal folklores, which gets typically depicted in artwork in temples, which they revere. And so you have this old artwork in different temples that have a lot of knowledge. You just have to know how to read the art. And that's how I read the art of Buddhist mandalas that were all Merkabas growing up. And then, of course, last 20 years found the science to prove that everyone has a Merkaba and we're all souls having human experience. So get over your sims. Um, <laughs> that's why I like the whole idea of uh, the mandala effect, uh, you know, because it is it is sort of like that. It's making you aware. For many of us, it woke us up to the fact that we're more than we, we thought. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... The interior gives us clues. So there's mandalas on the ceiling. So yeah, if, you look, mm -hmm, if you look, you have to know what you're looking at. And when I started looking at it, I'm like, I, uh, right there, and, uh, right there. I was like picking clues all over the place. <laughs> and, um, you know, some of the, uh, my, some of my Indian friends are like, what are you talking about? And they're like, they don't get it. I'm like, oh, saw that, saw that. I know about that, saw about that, you know, so, but now everybody can get caught up. So mandalas in the ceiling. And if you look closely at the mandalas on the ceiling, there's different, you know, mandalas. And we know that mandalas are basically Merkabas. Um, and if you go on the ceiling, if you go, I think one from the, the one on the very top, the biggest one, and you go down, three, four, five. So the fifth one down, that's the, the one that's more like a diamond shape. With yeah, like it's more like a diamond yeah. shape, but it's actually kind of like, um, it looks almost like a swastika, a rainbow swastika, but oh, it's, basically, yep, yep. it's basically rotation. It's the whirling logs in Native American tradition. Okay, yeah, I can definitely see that now. Yeah, it's a whirling log. It's just kind of, it's like the rotation of the, the master is a whirling log. And then if you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the eighth one down to the, almost to the, the smaller one, if you look closely, it's the infinity symbol. Yep, I see it. Yeah, you, got, you guys got to really, really look at the clues. We're, we're yeah. being treasure hunters here. It's the infinity symbol. So the mandalas on the ceiling of this ancient golden temple, um, these they didn't put decoration up just for fun these are clues you know they didn't put all this effort these are clues and these mandalas are the different um beings uh or this depictions of their energy signature now here's another clue so so we know like okay you need to have a merkaba a high energy signature to open up these uh the vaults. If you look at this atrium and you look at the columns on both sides, the really massive columns, like this temple was made for giants, okay? It's not made for normal people. These are massively tall columns. And you look way to the very end of that, you'll see the people are standing at the end of this pathway. Their height is the height of where the, uh, the tan Right, the little wall yeah, on the, the little lower wall. section. <laughs> yeah. they, they're, they're not even at the base of the columns, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're not even at the base of the column. These, this temple is made for giants. So um, so we would be at their knees, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. It, so we're giving you a clue. So if you look at the columns on both sides um, and you look up, at the top of each column are gold lions. Okay, yeah, I see those. Okay, so look really closely. On the top of each column are gold lions. That's a clue. So keep that in mind. So they made all this effort to put the clues right in front of your face. So the ceiling decorations, again, are, as we repeat, they're Buddhist mandalas or merkabas. 
I already went over the whirling log image in one of the Merkabas, like, like you see in Native American iconography, and the in infinity symbol. Now, I would love to go and look at this temple and just inspect every single one of it as much as possible, because I can probably pick out clues like nobody's business. But this is a basic idea. And the clues, again, they point to needing a Merkaba. And the lines on top of each col column says that it could possibly need a teacher's Merkaba that has the lions at the end of the column. So keep that in mind. So these are clues. This, this, is, this is a tribute to high frequency people. So let's go to the next one. Uh, just, just a quick uh, thing. Uh -huh. You know, I, I'm imagining vocal cords of an 18 foot tall giant would probably be a lot different than our vocal cords. Is it possible? Oh, it, it, we need somebody with this thundering 18 <laughs> foot tall voice to. We need Hercules. Or right. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, possibly, but the thing that we know about sound research, it doesn't matter the size that you are because you're thinking third dimension. It, you know, physical size, the energy field of the person is what matters. Uh, and right. like, and we know in science, especially with the map of consciousness by Dr. David R. Harkins, that babies come in with a certain energy field already, whether it's at 400, 250, whatever. Um, and so everybody comes in with a certain level of energy, but because we all get born into the game of earth and everybody's leveled with the amnesia, they don't know how, um, high frequency they are. So, um, but there are ways in modern times that we can find out how spiritually developed you are, um, so that you can work on your spiritual development and maybe have a trillion dollar market about. That'll work. That will work. Okay. All right. Um, the exterior. Remember the the first image that I had of the, the whole temple, the outside temple? Right. You're zoomed in now, right? I zoomed in because I was like, I mean, I love I love Indiana Jones. <laughs> I'm like such a... <laughs> Me too. I, Me too. <laughs> I love Star Trek and I love Indiana Jones. I'm such a tre treasure hunter. I wanted actually to be an archaeologist and I was going to go to the University of Arizona to be an archaeologist and then I found out that all you do all day is dig dirt and, and catalog and it was not like the movie <laughs> so I said forget it <laughs> but I still love it so I had the, I had some fun in an Indiana Jones thing because all he does is sit there and study murals and pictures and you know whatever so anyways I zoomed in and got a high pixelated image of the exterior and the front and the back of the temple is the same statues because the back um they didn't clean it up as much so there's a lot of moss on um on the exterior so it's not as shiny and gold as the front of the temple but it's the same um architecture it's the same statues so i zoomed in and i looked at every single statue every single statue. And it tells a story. It tells a story about creation. It tells a story about the game of life, um, the soul's play. It, it tells a story that, uh, you know, there may be giants that live in in this time with them, um, you know, on and on, that, that, that whole stuff. But what I found interesting also was this image on both sides of of uh, the temple. And I zoomed into this image. So it's kind of grainy that you're seeing, but what you're seeing is um, it, it looks like either a man or a woman with one leg up and it has multiple faces coming out. So it has like a main face and then it has two other side peripheral faces, which is very normal in, um, in Hindu artwork and in Buddhist artwork to represent the multiple parallel realities that you exist in and the multiple versions of you in each reality. That's what, that's what it means. It, I love that. I didn't, I didn't notice that until you pointed out. That's awesome. Yeah. It's your Mandela effects. So the, the art that is in these ancient temples, whether it comes from Buddhism or Zen um, or um, the Vedas or Hinduism that have these reputation, reputation, representation of highly evolved spiritual beings having multiple versions of themselves and faces and then all the multiple arms that come out represent 
the Mandela effect. Okay, so they have known this about shifting parallel realities based on your level of consciousness and energy field for thousands of years. And Buddhism. So that's not. Those aren't wings, then. Those are actually arms. Those are up. arms. I see. I see. Yeah, like in uh, in Thailand and Laos, they um, they have shows where they have women just kind of, you know, Kwan Yin and her five thousand arms and you know whatever. Right, right. <laughs> and her, her many faces in the many realities that she goes to to help people raise their energy field just a little bit before she moves on to the next, leave a little residue of positivity. So that's the representation. It represents the Mandela effect. It represents you working on your inner work and your spiritual development, raising your frequency and energy level of your Merkaba so that you can move from one parallel reality to another parallel reality from one version of your body to a hopefully a better version of your body in a higher reality. And then further and further, you, you kind of quantum jump between realities. And they have known this. Um, in the literature of Buddhism for almost 2,600 years. And Buddhism is an offshoot of Hinduism from the Vedas. And in the Vedas, um, based on the material, is up to about 7,000 years old. But if you study the Vedas and the Reg Vedas, um, the astrology in the story can be argued to be as much as 26,000 years old. Um, which goes into the ancient pyramids that um, around the world that can go even farther back into 20 plus thousand years. So we're going really into kind of so far back in our records. And these are the clues. So I don't want to get into the other book, but um, this image is also on the other on both sides. And so what it points to, if you study each statue on the exterior photos, and you notice that the gods and goddesses who navigate parallel realities, um, it's signifying that what is needed is a fifth dimensional Merkaba. Somebody who has a fifth dimensional Merkaba, who is aware of their personal Mandela effects, aware of how, of, of how to navigate between parallel realities, um, who is more conscious in the game that souls play in the physical. That's what is needed. That's the clue that this statue, um, this uh, statue on the um, temple walls is saying. That's because that's what it says in, in, in Buddhism and in Buddhist art. Um, is there any significance to Because I've seen it quite a bit where it, one leg is up like that, like sort of chilling. Um, it's a meditation, and it's really hard to see in the grainy because one um, because one of his hands down, and the other one is actually holding a meditation pose. Oh, okay, yeah, I can't really see that. Yeah, it's really but... hard to see. But the statue, one hand is holding a meditation pose, and the other hand is down. Okay, he's just kind of holding a meditation pose. Now, I don't know if that's a clue as well that when you say the Garuda mantra chant, you're supposed to do this meditation pose of your hand or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well try. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's what that statue is doing. And a lot of statues of um, Mandela effects in um, Hindu and Buddhist um, artwork um, have the the uh, master teacher doing some kind of pose. So actually, my, my book, Buddhist Mandalas, I have Kuan Yin doing kind of a pose with her yeah. fingers, which is the pose that she poses is to ward off evil, which is basically to ward off ignorance, which is the biggest evil to humanity is an ignorant thought process. Um, so, but that's what that's what the statue is doing. Um, the other thing that you should note about this clue is that um, the highly enlightened being is sitting on top of an eight-spoke platform. Okay, so if you look at the platform, um, there is a lion at the end of each spoke. Okay. Oh, I see. So it's like it's laying flat and he's on top of it. So there's the one, two, three, four, five. So we can see five of the lines, correct? Yeah, we what well, yeah, we can see five of the lines, but the ones the on the post. outside of the yeah. spoke and the ones on the outside are actually center points. So it's actually three on front, three on back, and two on side. So it's eight spokes. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So remember in the previous slide of the hallway that are dormant of lines on top of each column. Mm-hmm. Lines at the end of the spokes, lines at the end of the of the eight spoke. In right. Buddhism, we call it the eight spoke wheel of Dharma. Hmm. 
okay? Because a lot of our um, artwork comes and is influenced by the Vedas that it was influenced off of. Mm. So keep that in mind, people. That's some clues for you. So you have to have a fifth dimensional Merkaba um, and also know about how to shift parallel realities because you're going to have to shift into the parallel reality where the door opens. You know, something interesting that came to me is how so many of the statues have changed that we were aware of, like the thinker, that was a big one for me. And um, the statue of Shiva outside of CERN, people have reported they noticed changes in that. So I'm wondering if perhaps people who have studied this temple for years don't realize that some of the stuff has changed to sort of unlock more of the secrets about how to mm. unlock the door, maybe, you know, and they just maybe. didn't go back to look again, you know? Yeah, go back and look again because a, a new clue might be revealed. Yep. You might actually, I mean, that's a really good point. As you work on your awakening ascension, level up your energy um, all the way up to Buddhahood. It's going to be changing. Uh, it might change for you because yeah. you might get into a parallel reality, shift to a parallel reality where more of the clues are available in mm -hmm. these higher dimensions, um, which should help you out. So sacred geometry mm -hmm. is your Merkaba. Okay, so, you know, uh, uh, Dogen, which is a Zen Buddhist um, master teacher um, who taught Zen Buddhism in Japan, actually had a really great quote. And he basically says, do not follow the ideas of others, but learn to listen to the voice within yourself. Your body and your mind will become clear, and you will realize the unity of all things. So what he's basically talking about is as you become more enlightened and as you spiritually evolve more, the third dimension of things aren't really going to meet your satisfaction as much. Your enlightenment is because as because now you're playing with reality so much more um, cohesively. So like, you know, I was actually just talking to somebody who had NDE experience, and he actually went to Nirvana, and he was like, "How come I didn't experience the spirit world like everybody else?" And I said, "Because you're not from the spirit world. You're from Nirvana. You shot out from Nirvana to help Earth in the you know to help Earth's people ascend to the fifth dimension by helping raise some people's frequency. And so that's why you left there. And that's why nothing in this physical reality will ever meet your experience of Nirvana and going to the spiritual emptiness um, with Oversoul. And there are, there are souls coming, there are source cold souls, and we call them in Buddhism, toku children. They're source cold souls that um, came from- So just to clarify source. Nirvana, is that source? Yes. Okay. It's, okay. Yeah. So it's like so. Just, just, just really brief, and I want to. I don't want to get too esoteric, but when the universe, the Oversoul, the Universal One Mind, Allah, whatever you want to call it, it decide when it decided to give itself the biggest gift of um, experiencing its own creation through splitting off into all these different facets of itself into all these different souls, so that they can. Um, have their experience and learn and grow and evolve and etc and then the universe is inside everybody that's the universal one mind that science has proven is inside everyone that i talk to and you talk to in hypnosis um it is experiencing your development and also your amusement of experiencing creation firsthand through you so it's experiencing firsthand through your experiences and in and in order to create so let's imagine kind of like this uh void the spiritual emptiness where there's really no high and lows it's just kind of like um the sound of the lord is basically silent um creation doesn't really have or um, nirvana doesn't really have anything it's like an internal sleep in order for when it split off into all these different facets in order for it to have a physical reality in which souls can incarnate into and have this experience of life and learn and grow it had to create the polar opposite of physicality. It had to create the non-physical world, which is the spirit world. Okay, so you see that that yin yang that's in creation. Yeah. There's always a yin yang in creation. There's always the light and the dark, the up and the down, the physical world and the non-physical world, the spirit world. So um, the spirit world is was created at the same time as um, the physical world that souls incarnate. So when souls pass on, they go back to the spirit world. Do you want to incarnate again or do you want to go to the void? And some souls get tired of the game or they don't want to play the game anymore. 
with creation, they, get, they let go of their addiction to creation and they go back to zero point, they go back to the source code um, because nothing in the spirit world and nothing in creation is going to meet um, their needs as much as the spiritual emptiness of nirvana with the oversoul. So that's okay, a so, basic understanding. Okay, so, so um, just to, to just to clarify this, so we kind of got our little bubble of the physical and the spiritual. That's sort of part of the matrix. Or I, what word do you use? Uh, uh, hologram, maybe. What? Sure, sure. Um, and that is, I guess, one construct. So after we die, we go back to being a spirit, which is still part of that. It's just mm -hmm. we're existing in non-physical, like the mm -hmm. yin yang thing you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So then there's being outside of that. Which is, is that Nirvana or is there a bubble outside of that before you get to Nirvana? So just imagine kind of like, here's a good analogy. Imagine like the figure eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, each side of the figure eight, one's physicality, one's non-physical, that's the spirit world. Mm -hmm. The point in the center is Nirvana. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So I don't want to get too esoteric because it's kind of running off thing, but um, right. that's basically it. And the whole concept of eternal sleep is someone mm -hmm. from Nirvana. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it could take somebody who had incarnated at this time of Earth's ascension to the fifth dimension that came from Nirvana that has that frequency because they have remembrance of that high energy. So that's a possibility. And some of those clues are on the temple walls. Mm -hmm. So we just give clues. Um, and I'm going to do this really quickly. So the structure of platonic solids that are the makeup of all physical beings. So there's that. And then every human being is an energy being made up of a mandala with a halo around the head and a halo around the body. They've already proven this in science. I've gone through this many times. And then a person's aura field has a level of energy that it emits. So the higher the level of consciousness, the higher the energy field closer to Buddhahood and eventually Nirvana. So people may look alike, but their energy fields are different. And advanced um, spiritual civilizations use sonic vibrations to create and seal commands and words. Okay. That's um, the understanding in Buddhism about advanced civilizations. Um, they've gone beyond the 3D key and law, mm -hmm. gone straight to voice commands. Uh, you're you, actually you're actually cutting out a little bit, but you're getting to the fact that their voice commands to open mm -hmm. this door that we were looking at. Exactly. So people experience different parallel realities using their sacred geometric mandala, mm -hmm. and people with the highest Merkabas affect reality the most. So we've already proven this in science through Maharishi and thousands and thousands of meditation research for many decades, um, that only 1% of high frequency people are needed to split the fifth dimension earth off into its own parallel reality, which is where the golden age of humanity with interstellar future and with your potential, what you love to call aliens, what everybody loves is aliens reside. And um, not to break it to you, they look like people. <laughs> so many of them look like people. <laughs> so, Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> no, you know what I always say is once the freak show aspect of aliens, everybody loves the freak show. Once the freak show aspect is done, and then they we get there and they integrate, and and you're you're working with them in jobs, and they possibly possibly could be dating your your children and stuff. Um, are you really going to be that uh, embraceive? Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> people are always embraceive of the freak show until it also and it becomes a part of their every day and then they're like i, I well, don't know if i was that welcoming <laughs> you know what um michelle and sherry and i were all talking about um separately but was that what what if when our other strands of dna the 12 strands are all activated um because we're all noticing physical changes i'm noticing some ridges in my forehead that weren't there and i'm like what if we just all start to look like different types of beings i mean wouldn't that be something yeah, yeah. You know, actually, um, that they, they and I, I put it in my 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 book. I think I put put it in my book, um, Buddhist Mandalas. But um, they've done this in light photons. Uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Garavi, which is a wave geneticist from um, Russia, mm 
Mm -hmm. um, he shone a green light laser from salamander eggs that he picked up and he put it into frog eggs and the frog eggs hatch salamanders. Okay, so he was able to prove through his scientific research that um, the different frequencies in light will change the DNA. Yeah, um, it actually carried carried it over, carried the information yeah. through the light or something. The information like. is through the light. The yeah. information is through the Merkaba and the light. And and they repeat the, the science experiment with Dr. Um, Zhang Kanjian in China. And what mm -hmm. he did was he passed light from um, from ducks, duck eggs, and he took that light that he picked up, um, the sonic vibration he picked up from duck eggs, and he shone it into 500 chicken eggs. Okay, and what ended up happening was the same exact thing. The 500 chicken eggs, um, their offspring hatch hybrid duck chicken. So 80% wow. of yeah, 80% of the chicken eggs were born with flat bills, and 90% had duck eyes instead of chicken eyes, and 25% of the chicken eggs had web feet. So they repeated the same science experiment of, sh of taking the light from one DNA energy signature of one species and put it into another similar one, changed it. So you can change your DNA with light. And all of this, like, uh, uh, all of this light frequencies and raising the energy of Earth, fifth dimension of talk about the energy, it is literally affecting us and all the beings on earth and it is changing us how it's changing us i don't know but you were um, cutting out a little bit did you say the sun or the cosmic energy or something because mm -hmm. i was thinking the yeah. same thing yeah yeah the sun the cosmic energy the schumann resonance all that the electromagnetics all of that it has it's light that has um higher frequency energy and as the earth raises our energy it is affecting all of the beings living on planet earth and we are changing some the sun is changing the and sun, the is, sun changing. is so much wider now and it's you know, if, if they can do it with those eggs and change the DNA, then those codes coming in from the sun could totally be altering us and oh, activating yeah. us. Yeah, know? yeah. So we're, we're kind of going through a transformation. Um, and in Buddhism, they call, I like to call them the X-Men of the fifth dimension. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we did a, a, the last interview on Yeshua ben Yosef and the X-Men of the yep. fifth dimension. Yeah. But basically, that's in, the prophecy is that um, the people of higher frequency that go into the fifth dimension into deeper into the fifth dimension parallel reality of earth will completely be the tomorrow people in that, that sci-fi movie, the tomorrow people yeah. where it's the, or the X-Men, the, the tomorrow people with all these six senses and a higher um, uh, nervous system. So, yeah. um, and actually Dr. David R. Hawkins in the map of consciousness, he found that out through his kinesiology research, lifetime research, that there's an offshoot of humanity. According to his research, there's an offshoot of humanity that he likes to coin homo spiritus. And it is a highly evolved spiritual race of um, enlightened humans on planet earth. And it completely shoots off from the reality of the third dimension on all the lower frequency people. So. That's amazing. And I think a lot of the uh, kids now are being born with gifts mm -hmm. already going on, you know, already yeah. turned on. Yeah, turned on. So anyways, I don't want to get into that because people are going to be like, oh, my God, it's not on. Right. You're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I, it's all good. It's, it, you know, you're going to get the lesson that you're going to get. And if you were meant to, to experience and the joys and the wonders of the garden you're still going to experience that that does not mean that you're not evolving and you're a better person if you're not able to keep up with the phd students okay <laughs> so <laughs> it's okay it was it's all good so um anyways going to the next one so i just want um, to, um <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so in sound research um um the sri Lyantra symbol that you see here um is translated as the Hindu Sri Yantra in the Vedas. So mm. the Om chant actually has an energy signature that looks, that translates to what this looks like. And in sound research, again, they when they play Om in a tonoscope, it formed the perfect Sri Yantra symbol, which signifies um, the ancient 13,000 years old or older um, design. And it's not man-made. Okay, this is natural in nature. 
So um, it shows evidence that there is a divine being or universal consciousness in all beings in physical reality that's designing all of this. So it was so, not an so That was created with cymatics right there on the right? Yep. Oh, yep. wow. That was created before cymatics in the in tonoscope where it was this long thing on a sand plate. Mm -hmm. That's where it, what's created. Um, in ancient times, and they still do this in, in um, Buddhism, where they would um, chant um, a frequency into a singing bowl with water, and then they would quickly draw out the, the mandala that it portrays. But th this is what the Om translate to. So again, um, the 432 hertz sound frequency of a human being, which is you, me, and everybody else, is 432 hertz. Mm -hmm. um, both the 432 hertz and the Om chant converts into a Sri Yantra symbol. So every human being, Very is, cool. yeah, every human being is a Sri Yantra, which is 432 hertz frequency. You are your own Om, Om, which means you are the own you are the own God and goddesses of your own life. Yeah, and you can actually see the Merkaba in there, and too. You can see the Merkaba. You're creating your own reality, and you're working in the Petri dish of everybody else, creating a collective reality. And that's how you have the same creation powers as the universe, that ability so that you can create, so they can experience your joys and your triumphs through you, which is a gift that you give to them and to yourself. <laughs> Okay, so it's proven in science. So everyone is energy, and they are the master of their own reality. So everyone is a, whole, a soul having a human experience for their soul's spiritual growth and amusement. And our bodies, like I said this many times, our bodies are only our sims, but our Merkabas are the real energy that we carry lifetime after lifetime. And in Merkabas, they evolve to Christ consciousness and above, or they devolve based on your inner work and um, your de your spiritual development. So if you start being a dick tomorrow and every day and causing all of this, you know, harm to people, your market but is going to lower its energy and frequency. Mm, okay. Makes sense. Yeah, you know, it it, it it's a evolving or devolving thing. So be nice, people. Be nice. <laughs> be nice. You know, it's okay. There's more than there's more than one way to go down the rabbit hole. There's more than one way. Everybody's gonna go to the spirit world anyway. So we need to stop trying to change everything and be right because yeah. there's multiple yeah. ways down the rabbit hole. Everyone's gonna go to the spirit world. Um, they're gonna learn and have a life review. Um, you know, whether it's a life review that's positive or negative they're going to have that and then um for some people they're going to completely let go of the addiction to creation and playing the games in creation and go to nirvana and mm. that eternal slumber so and that's fine too um very few people will go there um many of them are avatars very few people will go there and because they go there very few accounts of nirvana will come out so you don't really hear very much so most most accounts of nirvana are um, documented in the buddhist tradition because that's all we work on mm -hmm. and so we'll have a little bit more accounts of that spiritual emptiness that getting off the wheel of dharma reincarnating in one holographic reality to another in this you know that we plan in the spirit world into the physical world just getting off the complete wheel getting off the whole game and going to nirvana that's mm -hmm. what we talk about oftentimes but if you're not ready to go to do that you're it's fine to be in the spirit world and, and keep playing the game as well. It's all good. So yeah. um, it's just. And it, it sounds boring. Somebody mentioned something about it being boring in Nirvana. And trust me, it's it's actually quite nice. I've been there once. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, you. you toku. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, your aura field is a Merkaba, people. So here's the website. I know last time everybody was like, what's that website? What's that website? It's yep. called Sound Made Visible. And I actually did it. Um, my husband and I did it as well. And basically, the researchers in somatic research um, found that by playing different frequencies in the form of hertz into a sand plate, it creates sacred geometry patterns that look like Buddhist mandalas or right. mandalas. And sound frequencies are measured in the form of hertz. Like the German physicist, Henrik Rudolf Hertz, discovered sound frequencies in 18... 87 through um, radio wave receivers mm -hmm. that electromagnetic waves exist through um, radio waves or and that's his evidence 
um, that exists, but in honor of his lifetime of work, the measurement of one cycle per second is revered as hertz from his right. name. So each um, each cycle of hertz are standing waves that are f a f flow of sine waves reflecting back at each other, which looks like multiple lines of Vesca Pisces, and it starts looking like the flower of life in 2D. Mm -hmm. Now, I say that because, um, like I said, the 432 hertz frequency is someone who harmonizes the emotion of the human body, and um, the makers of Cymoscope, which can image your Merkaba, um, is done by John Stuart Reed and Eric Larson. And John Stuart Reed, um, he was an acoustic scientist working in, in like a UK laboratory. Mm -hmm. And Eric Larson is a US based design engineer. And he discovered that the 432 Hertz frequency is the frequency of the human voice. Mm -hmm. Okay. The human voice creates that um in um, image in the last one. So, you know, the universe is so creative in the different ways it expresses itself. But so this engineering duo, they developed the cymoscope technology for semantics that can take anyone's voice and show the sacred geometry that is unique to the DNA blueprint of that person. So we, now, um, before I go to the next one, remember we we're talking about those chicken eggs and the salmon eggs and changing based on light. Yeah taking the any the DNA uh, blueprint of light from one egg and putting it into a different species and changing mm -hmm. the physicality of the other species right. it's the same concept right. so um, the mandalas of each human being being a unique to them shows their complete energetic DNA blueprint in sound so it's like the genetic code in relation to sound. So both men and women, to so both men, they actually found that the sound research using a cymoscope, which is their technology, um, that everyone vibrates at 432, that the sacred geometry mandala displayed um, shows that the voice of each person has a, is slightly different, which mm -hmm. makes each of us unique from one another. In terms of sound so no like no two snowflakes are the same no two people's merkaba are the same we're all unique so um the the tool what you look at here is you you'll see it showing it in a three-dimensional mm -hmm. form and so sound actually travels in bubbles right. okay your merkaba is a three-dimensional bubble that's always spinning and moving and um and so sound waves is actually not a flat wave it actually moves in bubbles and they found this in science and so your voice is a holographic representation of all that you are and all aspects of your energy field so um Again, despite what is taught in colleges, that sounds are that travel to your ears as um, waves, it's actually as holographic bubbles. So mm -hmm. just, just to keep that in mind. And um, in math, the two-dimensional version of mandalas often are depicted in platonic solids, like, like, like Metatron's cube is often in platonic solids. Mm -hmm. um, really... The energy lines connect at the intersection points of nodes. So let me let me explain it. So you're looking at this image here, okay? Everyone has an aura field, which is your Merkaba. And if you cut it in half like they show here, it looks like platonic solids. It's a two-dimensional view of the inside. But in actuality, uh, if you see those little circles on the image, those are different nodes. And the energy moves through those different nodes. Okay, and um, Buddhists, they believe that the more developed and complex your Merkabas and the more nodes and clear the images are, are um, where such teachers um, have, they have these developed Merkabas. So all we're doing is just, you know, every experience that we have and every time we evolve our energy, all we're doing is creating more complexity, more nodes, higher energy. Um, so 
Because I, I want to make sure that nice. button. Yeah. So, your Merkaba is a bubble. So here's a quick thing. There's also another way that you can see how developed your Merkaba is. Aside from going to Sound Made Visible and getting your, your Merkaba image to see physically what it looks like and how complex it is, um, the Map of Consciousness, who, which was developed by David R. Hawkins, and he um, he's a doctor, he practices um, uh, mental health for a long time. Um, he spent a lot of his life creating the map of consciousness and using kinesiology to measure the energy field of different people. And actually many Buddhist monasteries, uh, when he was alive, they used to con consult with him to measure the energy field of different toku children, such as the Kamapa and Dalai Lama and other, other people, so that they can make sure that um, the monks found the correct reincarnation of a former high frequency monk or person um, that's come into the tradition to, to, to take over and um, kind of lead and shepherd the way for the next generation. So you can't just use politics to vote yourself into these positions in um, Buddhism. You actually have to have a high frequency and you have to prove it. Um, Wouldn't that be nice way, to have that in politics? <laughs> I know. It's like low energy, low energy, low energy, low energy, high. We're demonstrating <laughs> just the opposite, it seems, these days, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> ancient soul, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> ancient soul, high energy, high Merkaba, yes. So, um, but typically, it's it's funny that, you know, societies would typically um, take somebody who has a energy field that is kind of close to their energy field. So, um, yeah. That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, the notable toku monks of the past in the tradition was Yeshua ben Yosef. And again, appointments are not made through democratic voting, but based on measuring your level of consciousness, all the monks who meditate in gamma, make sure that they source the, the right person they would call david r hawkins can you come and make sure that we pick the right person we think is a high calibrating person well you could do that as well through kinesiology and again the note about this that in order to have accurate results the two people conducting the muscle testing they need to radiate at at least 200 or higher level consciousness okay they need to be integrous and um and they also have to believe in God. If the atheist, what he's found is um, it doesn't work for some reason. So they have really? to Really? That's interesting. Yeah. They have to believe in consciousness. Otherwise, consciousness won't answer your question if you don't believe in it. <laughs> so <laughs> that was really funny. Wow. So you have to be at least 200 uh, level conscious or higher, which what he found, as Dr. David R. Hawkins found, is that 15 to 20% of the world's population. Hold on. My mom jaw walked in. It's okay. Well, you have to ask Daddy. I told you this before. Hi. I'm almost done. You ask Daddy. He'll get it for you. Thank you. Don't come in again. Um. Anyways, <laughs> so uh, we're gonna wrap it. We're gonna wrap it up. <laughs> she sounds adorable. Yeah, I know. And then I have Miss Lisa door open so she can scream to the second <laughs> floor. Um. <laughs> so. <laughs> She doesn't care, but she's like, you've done so many. I don't care about any of them. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, so 15 to 20 percent of the world's population when David Hawkins was alive currently resided at 200 or higher level consciousness. So about 80 percent of the world is below 200, which oh, is wow. the, um, the level of consciousness that creates wars, that fights. <laughs> that sees everything in third dimensional. So um, that, 10 to 50, that 15 to 20% of society is actually raising everybody up and keeping them from destroying themselves. Right. <laughs> so, and, and what year was that? Um, that was while he was alive. And he's already passed on. Okay. Okay. Um, and so so during his lifetime, he again, he calibrated many teachers. He calibrated the Dalai Lama and the Pope John Paul II. And um, he actually talks about this in um, his books that um, both uh, spiritual leaders, they both calibrated about 540. So no one that he calibrated was able to 
kind of get to 600 because 600, what he found in his research, 600 is the entry point of enlightenment energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody who radiates at 600 or above bring lots of pain in their body because the body can't handle that much energy in the third dimension. Oh, okay. Okay. So, you know, you, you get a lot of pain that comes of it. And in his lifetime, he actually talks about it in his books that he calibrated um, and found that there was only eight people on planet Earth that had 600 above. And they weren't in any religion. They were normal people. Oh. So, um, that little grandma that's guarding all day, vibrating at 750, <laughs> you all know, right. whatever. So, um, the caveat is that Dr. Hawkins asked, um, again, source um, about that. And that's how he found out that there is going to be an offshoot of humanity that he coins homo spiritus that's, that works on advancing their spiritual development and splits off from the rest into a parallel reality um, that it's higher in frequency. And so most of that 15 to 20 percent actually make it there. So I don't want. To, I wouldn't want to be with the eighty <laughs> percent. Oh, I know, but man, that it seems like the world would really go to hell if ever. Oh ever God, I don't know. <sighs> but if, but if that's where it's you were vibrating at, you would love it, right? It'd be like, oh, yeah. it's so much better now that all those high vibe people are out of here. The high vibe people, but you know, the high vibe people actually bring the rest of the world with them. They're just going to struggle in the high vibes because they're going to be manifesting out of their worst fears. Mm -hmm. And so if they're manifesting out of the worst fears, they're not ready to manifest in the higher dimensions where things manifest faster, things come into fruition faster because they haven't learned to resolve their third, third dimensional issues and repress um, issues yeah. um, to be able to manifest positively and um, more appropriately in, and mm -hmm. use the tools appropriately. It's like the difference with children. If you give them a shovel, one person will build a house. Another person will beat somebody else with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so um, obviously that child has a low level of consciousness and is not ready to build the house. That one needs to go play in a different sandbox where they still learn not to beat the other kids with the shovel. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's okay. The universe <laughs> very creative in helping everyone at their level of consciousness but for Absolutely. the but for the kids who are working on the phd and working on building the fifth dimension it's not necessary to keep them with the lower reality um because mm -hmm. it's it just it's just physics you just you know light attracts light energy condenses and goes to where it's it's going to match so and we really do go where we're vibrating where we're resonant at. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah, you just, and I want to mention that uh, Dr. Hawkins was born in 1927 and he died in 2012. So he just died just a few years ago. Wow, yeah. he's pretty old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, another, and Dr. Hawkins, um, I listened to all his stuff um, and I listened to everybody's stuff in, in mm -hmm. this work to try to find scientific evidence and Definitely, kind of back, yeah. back up. So, um, he actually talks about um, coming from the void mm. and um, coming from nirvana and, and explaining the spiritual emptiness. And he actually describes it exactly very much like many of the Buddhist um, monks and nuns who have also had the experience. So he's what you would call a toku, an ancient soul from source. Mm. So, I um, mean, there's plenty of those out, out here as well. So um, anyways, another real quick thing note about reaching the higher states of consciousness is um, that he's found and many people of higher frequency have found this as well is that little demonic energies will try to um, find holes in your character to take you down from reaching mm. buddhahood or nirvana it's actually part of the game yeah um, it's the ego and the final doorway and although um, meditation research says it shows that it takes one percent of humanity to raise the rest of humanity into a higher state of existence, Dr. Hawkins actually found in his research that three percent of humanity is actually working on attaining spiritual enlightenment, and that three percent is actually offsetting the negativity of all of humanity away from a lower dense reality so oh, we bring nice. everybody up everybody's coming to the fifth dimension with us um because you know meditation research shows that it only takes one percent to mm -hmm. affect the greater whole 
but Dr. Hawkins found that it's actually gone up to 3%. So it's becoming more trendy to be um, to work on your Merkaba and work on your spiritual development. Yeah. And that's, and that's actually bringing everybody up. But And I've been again, seeing it too. People I never thought are seeming to wake up now. So this is uh this is an exciting time. Yeah, the the caveat is that not everybody wants to stay in the higher dimensions mm-hmm. because they want to continue to um live in the third dimensional energy and kind of do the low frequency stuff. And, you know, they don't want to create out of the worst fears because they haven't learned to create um, out of abundance and out of positivity. So they're still working on some basic lessons. So they may be pulled by the storm into the higher dimensions, but there are many souls that are exiting this reality one way or another. And I found that in my QHHT hypnosis practice as well. Um, when people try to talk to deceased loved ones and, you know, why did you leave? And they're like, I'm just not ready for that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it's not, it's not that that lesson's not for me, but I'm going to cheer you on from the other side. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's, always the, that's always the thing that they get in hypnosis when they talk to the deceased loved ones is I'm going to cheer you on from the other side. You're going to make it for us mm-hmm. and we're going to learn from you. And it's so exciting. Yeah. So um, it's a great, it's a great job, everyone. Well, a lot of times they can do so much more. I know Dolores Cannon is doing so much more from the other mm-hmm. side now. So, I mean, a lot of times they, they can help out a lot more. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, again, um, many many religions do not teach full enlightenment due to being stuck in third dimensional separatism from source and the rest of humanity. However, many religions can bring you up to a certain point and then you have to complete the journey elsewhere oftentimes alone and so i know everybody in the mandela effect community kind of feels alone sometimes because there's not that many people in your um Mm -hmm. your circle that can relate to shifting from one reality to another talking about parallel people talking about different events all that kind of stuff so it kind of feels alone sometimes but at least we have each other here and and we know we're not local and I publish books on this, so my name is stamped on it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we have each other, guys. We have each other. It's okay. We're the 10 to 15%. Yeah. Yeah, kiss the baby. So anyways, <laughs> again, locations have unique frequencies, which can be used, like traveling vortexes as well. So much like longitude and latitude. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's uh, another way to measure your energy field. So... What does a DNA voice signature look like if you get it from Sound Made Visible? Wow, this is yours yeah, and your husband's? Awesome. Yeah, 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 this is my husband and mine. I'm so excited. So I was like, I want to do this. I want to see what my Merkaba looks like. <laughs> so, so I got, I, I, um, I, I sent in, I sent in, uh, my voice and I said my name, um, Vaughn. And then I said, ooh, um, ooh, you know, I just sent that. And I did that for about 30 seconds and I sent in my voice. And what they do is they, they, they play your voice into the Cymoscope machine. So the modern singing bowl now. They play your voice in the Cymoscope machine. And it, when they play it, it instantly makes a sacred geometry shape. Okay, and and it's it's gonna it's gonna change depending on you know what you say, but it's the same framework. So, um, the one you see here, when I say when my voice says my name Vaughn, it makes the shape. Okay, and the funny here's the funny thing. I actually showed it to the monks uh, in my monasteries. Uh, uh, yeah, and I, I love the eight pointed structure in there, like you saw. <laughs> <laughs> they were just laughing because they're like, we knew it. We knew it all along. You're a teacher. And it's funny because um, like all growing up um, and in the different monasteries and temples that my family would go to here in the Seattle area and across the country when we visit family and friends. And when we go to Laos and we look at the temples that we're um, commissioning artwork and renovation of, et cetera, et cetera. Oftentimes I always had the experience where the senior monks would stop in the middle of chants or um, what they're doing and c- let the younger student monks carry on the meditation or chant. And they will look around to see who just walked in. And it was often my family just walking, we would just quietly sit in and um, they would, say they would try to locate which one in the family has the high Merkaba, has the high energy field that they picked up. Mm 
and they would notice it's me and they would say two things to me. They're saying, do you want to teach a lesson? Because I'm exhausted. <laughs> And I would say, no, I'm just a little girl. I don't know anything. I don't have anything to teach anybody. And they're like, oh, okay. And, wow. then, and then they would say, um, no, you're not. No, you're not. You know about the game and you can teach people. And I said, like, I don't know anything. And so my mom would just shrug it off. And they would always just say, um, in the spirit world, you are a life planner. You help people plan their lives and the excursions they're going to have when they get born into whatever game they play into. So I'm like, well, that's interesting. And I've never heard about that until recently when I um, was doing um, Dolores Cannon's QHHT um, modality through my hypnosis practice. So it was funny because when I got my Merkaba image, what do you see? You see the eight wheel, um, wheel of Dharma in Buddhism. And then if you look at the end of the spokes, it's a lion's head at the end of oh each gosh, spoke. Yeah. <laughs> oh my so, gosh, I see it. That's so wild. Yeah, that is so wild. I was like, and this is from saying Vaughn. Oh my gosh, so, so you got to you gotta travel over there. Those doors are going to fly open for you. No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think <laughs> so. I have a different reason for that. So, um, yeah, and I actually pulled up the image of what a female lion looks like. It is exactly that. And then... Um, the lines right there, the the um, and again, everybody can look up the eight wheel, uh, eight spoke wheel of dharma and the lines at the end of the spokes, and remember the earlier um, slides with those call the clues on the temple decorations that point to a high calibrating energy field Merkaba, yeah. and at the bottom of the entry points it has um, the 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 lines at the end, that's what it's referring to. So the thing is that um, in my Merkaba, the energy fields, it's a 12 fold geometry, which means um, like if you remember in the previous slides where everybody's a, an, an orb mm -hmm. and this is just the cut inside. So you can see the inside, it looks like a mandala, but it's actually an orb. I have 12 nodes of intersection points where these lines of energy go through and a 12 node mark above for myself makes the wheel of dharma and the lions at the end of the spoke so i have all the buddhist symbols so the monks when i showed them were just laughing because they're like we knew it all along but we were forecasting your potential down the road not what you are at the time, your potential. We just didn't know that you weren't going to come into your knowledge about this whole game that we're playing until much later in your life. And much of that is in the work that I put into my three book series, Buddhist Mandalas. So it explains the scientific understanding of the whole game that we're playing. So, so if you had done this like as a child, it would have been completely different then because you hadn't really. Possibly. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, they had. It's simpler, they had, probably. Similar, but maybe. simple. Yeah. yeah, I didn't maybe didn't know. I don't know how that necessarily works. But well, so they're that, asking in the chat where to do this, and it's it's right here on the screen. Soundmadevisible.com. If you want to go mm -hmm. and see what your Merkaba looks like, this is really yeah, cool. yeah. So on the right is my husband's. Okay, so my husband he had did E E I O U, and he you know just said his name, and they image four different versions, and then you pick the version you like. Mm -hmm. The one that is clear so resonates with you, and then um, the, and the color contrast and their images. So you could do one with color, or you could do one just kind of solid like he did. Mm -hmm. And his actually shows the um, the twelve nodes. So if you count those different, yeah, like I was noticing that. Yeah, yeah, the trumpets on the ends; those are yeah. twelve. Yeah. So those in a in a sphere, those are the twelve nodes, and all the lines go through those nodes. Okay, yeah. now um, the thing that is interesting is that um, what they found is that what Simoscope found for all the people that sent in their, their voice um, recordings for their um, DNA voice signature is what they call it, but it's your Merkaba, mm -hmm. your, energy, your energy signature that's been imaged. What they found is that 10 to 20% of DNA voice signatures are this complex, only 10 to 20%, which kind of falls in line with David R. Hawkins, 15 to 20% of humanity is uh, 200 or above in energy signatures. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, so my husband and I, uh, our baseline structure is we're a 12 node um, sphere. So him and I are um, really ancient souls that have quite a bit of go around in this game. And we have just continued to just raise our frequency and raise our frequency. We kind of, um, we're not young souls. And like the older your soul or the more spiritually advanced your soul is, the higher your energy field. And you can see it in the complexity of your Merkabas. Mm. So, um, and I think on another previous interview, uh, we talked about like the funny thing also is that when you get your couple's Merkabas image, mm -hmm. A lot of couples that have been together for a very long time or they really kind of jive with each other, their Merkabas buzz will be very similar. And this mm. proves my husband and I are equal matches to each other. We're both 12 nodes. So it would be kind of funny if like in the future they start matching pe people like a like a matchmaking service based on mm -hmm. your Merkaba. Well, you're 12 nodes, so here's your badge. You're four nodes, so here's your lane. <laughs> you're, here's your eight node lane. Here's all the people that match your energy field. So yeah. It will be really hilarious. But that's what they found that's very interesting. So my husband's, you know, mine has all the Buddhist symbols in it. That's what I resonate with. And then my husband's has all the musical all these trumpets and these lines and these different energy. So he's in a band. Oh, that's right. He's in a band. I forgot. He's that's right. Band. He's yeah. about a musical. It's in a band. <laughs> so it's hilarious. So of course the musician married the metaphysical Buddhist gal. So and I sense. love the little trumpet heads. All yeah, no, it looks like trumpet heads. So it's hilarious. Broadcasting sound music. That's mm -hmm, cool. mm -hmm. So um, the, let me see here. So here's the thing, because he asked a little bit about, well, Vaughn, why don't you just go and, you know, say the, the, the mantra, open up the, the vault. I think it's for me to teach, but mm. to allow others to win the lottery. So again, like my whole life, I've been giving winning tickets to casinos, and I try nothing happens. I give the ticket to somebody else, and they win the prize. <laughs> you know? So um, if that's taught me anything, that it's just for me to, to teach, but it's for somebody else to win the lottery. So um, my Merkaba says that I know the game, which obviously all the contents in Buddhist mandalas shows the scientific evidence about the game that we all play. So there's right. the knowledge that you can read, and I'm happy to talk about it as well. And um, again, the clues on the temple decorations point to a high calibrating energy field Merkaba. So um, you must be at least 600 or higher in the map of consciousness. So we're getting really um, into small, into scales of population that's really small that's going to have the high frequency. And so like all those yogis and the monks and the people that's tried and failed, they need to get the Merkaba image to see how complex and advanced they are. And they need to get a kinesiology test to see how much energy their Merkaba emits. That's a basic premise to see if you're high enough calibration to try. Otherwise, don't waste your time. Right. <laughs> okay, because the clues on the temples tell you exactly that. Yeah. It needs a high calibrating Merkaba to open those doors. So the game starts by seeing how spiritually advanced you are. Um, so again, uh, Get your Merkabas image and get your energy field measured. So that's the uh, basic. Silver Moon's asking, is it expensive to do that? Or do you get a break for couples or anything? Um, For one person's, for an individual Merkaba, I think on the website it's 144 mm -hmm. And then if you want to, I, I think it's almost double that. Um, but, you know, I, I sell jewelry on my website. And so I just basically use my PayPal. <laughs> for me, it's kind of funny money. <laughs> Right, so, right, right. you know um but um so that's yeah but cool. it but it's a great christmas present for the people in your family that's really spiritual and they kind of want to know oh i've been doing all this work i want to oh, see yeah. how advanced i am i want to see what my merkaba looks like and you can image um the the engineers at cymoscope said that your 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 dna voice signature will change over time too so it can get more complex as you age or it can devolve as well which goes into the same thought process that it's it's ever changing depending on you so mm -hmm. you can you can take a 
an Im you can get an image right now and then go do a meditation retreat, do a lot of inner work, blah, blah, blah. Ten years later, do another one, just kind of go to check-ins, like, kind of like a Merkaba check-in, and see how much has changed. Wow. Which is why what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a health assessment ten years, every ten-year interval. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, let me go to this one. So the Buddhist symbols are as clues. So I'm bringing this up because you're going to see this in the image of the temple. Mm -hmm. So um, again, you have the wheel of Dharma and lines at the gates. Uh, and these are the guardians of the middle path in Buddhism. So the lions are the teachers and the lambs are the students. So if you see in the image here, a Buddhist Top image. Top of the pillar again. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you see they have the lambs looking at the wheel of Dharma, and the wheel of Dharma always have the lions. So, mm -hmm. you know, they've been talking about Merkabas um, and the Merkabas of teachers for a very long time in Buddhism and all the way to the Vedas of Hinduism and probably even further back into ancient lost civilizations that we don't know about, but we always have sacred geometry decorating these uh, megalithic structures that nobody knows about until now so um and and again when when students in i'm just going to paraphrase a couple of things in buddhism so it can give some ideas so when students teach what they learn and then teachers experience what they know Okay, so teachers love learning from students because then they're like, oh, I taught really good. Um, and the 12 Ninandas, okay, is what we call it. It's the 12 characters that cause reincarnation through the samsara, which is the coming back, playing another game, another round of creation. So remember, I have 12 nodes in my Merkaba. So it's my husband in Buddhism that would, that would can be related to the 12 Ninandas, the 12 characters that cause you to come back over and over again. So mm -hmm. the philosophies of Buddhist symbols are in my marka, the 12 Ninandas, the Wheel of Dharma, Dharma the Lions. Mm -hmm. It's just hilarious. So, That's um, awesome. so my, the, the monks in my temple never saw an image Merkaba, and they were just like, tickled fancy to <laughs> see my Merkaba and that they were correct, but they saw it in a different way, in a three-dimensional image rather than through meditation. So they're really happy to see that. They learned something new. So again, anyone's Merkaba can evolve or devolve spiritually. And um, King Asoka, which is a popular king in India, he popularized the lions and the guarding of the wheel, the guarding the wheel of Dharma, which became the emblem of India. And the Buddhist symbols of the Wheel of Dharma, such as the lions as teachers, the lambs as students, um, and the making of students into teachers comes from meditation of seeing these symbols in sound. So um, they saw all of these symbols when they were meditating over the ages, but now we can see them for real. So they weren't like smoking something <laughs> they right. actually saw these symbols in a teacher's merkaba so i think shane you need to get your merkaba image because i think you will have a very fascinating merkaba oh that would be cool yeah yeah so it's a great christmas present um yeah. so the other thing is your merkaba is your light vessel that travels parallel realities so remember the image of the um Mandela effect statue on um, the temple walls at many slides earlier. Mm -hmm. So we're going to refer back to that. And so here's an example of a traditional Buddhist um, imagery of a highly evolved high frequency person, or in this case, a teacher that is traveling between parallel realities from one version of her to to another version of her between one body to another so you know you have the five thousand hands and the different faces and you know yada 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 so um many master teachers are called buddhas and they all talk about how consciousness changes reality and they all talk about parallel realities mm -hmm. and all these people have very highly evolved merkabas and they all represent they're represented with a 3D portrayal of multi-dimensionality in the artwork. 
So this is kind of like ancient times understanding of depicting this concept of Mandela effects. Yeah. It's really hard for third dimension people to get. So <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like falling in love. You can't explain it until you experience it. And right. then you can't unfall in love again. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so every Mandela effect, personal Mandela effect shifts you from one parallel reality to the next and ultimately further into the fifth dimension with Earth. So don't feel, don't feel bad for 3D people. Everyone is getting the parallel version with the parallel people that fit them. Okay. So um, I just want to preface that. So, you know, y your, your family member that is different in this reality that has a, you know, different injury than you remember it from the last version of that family member, it's still your family member. You're still going to love them right. in whatever version they are at. So at least they exist in this reality. Some people completely lose people. Mm hmm completely i had some, i had somebody who um came in and she's like i lost my best friend my best friend doesn't exist in this reality i have no one to talk to wow oh so that's sad so i was like oh well maybe she'll pop in maybe she'll work on her awakening ascension in that reality and pop in and then you'll get her back but yeah. you, you have other best friends <laughs> <You know? laughs> so sometimes some people it's very rare but some people actually even lose people because that person doesn't exist in the reality that they're in so if you have a parallel version that's good enough yeah well once one person said there was twins that lived next door and then all of a sudden it was just one girl um it was a youtube video i watched but the family didn't know they didn't know they were missing anybody so it was all yeah good. <laughs> so it was all good only have a high calibrating merkaba mm -hmm. and you're traveling parallel realities so you know between one shift to another yeah so this is all ancient understanding sense, yeah yeah the, the Hindus and the Buddhists and the ancient traditions that speak about your Merkabas, speak about parallel realities, they're talking about the stuff that we're experiencing now. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're not crazy. You're having an experience that very few people had in the past. And these people were so influential and had such high energy and influenced the people around them so much that they're iconic in these traditions. So, but now instead of being a couple of weird fringe people, we're a collective, and it's hey. much easier now because yeah, the energies the and stuff. So we got yeah. it. We got it kind of easy on this time around. Yeah, we're doing it as a collective. <laughs> we're you know so yeah. Kuan Yin, Kuan Yin, the female Buddha, who's like, I'm not going to go to Nirvana. I'm going to continue to help people raise their consciousness, and I want to go through Nirvana and go through that doorway as a collective. Mm -hmm. This is her vision. Yeah. of a collective consciousness going to the fifth dimension together and we all go into the good stuff. Yeah. So since everything's infinite and there's really no rush, why not? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah exactly. So here's, here's the thing. So they found this in science and again, all the science is in Buddhist mandalas. So um, Earth's grid is leveling up to the fifth dimension. Okay. And Earth has a consciousness as well. And the Schumann resonance is our scientific measure about earth raising her energy level to the fifth dimension so earth is also made of a sacred geometry and she is completing her mandala to move into a parallel reality towards the fifth dimension so she is moving along with the whole universe the whole universe is leveling up and i found this in my qhht hypnosis sessions as well the oversoul says nope time's up no more time's up time to evolve because it's time to evolve so um the earth is ascending and whatever level you are at right now, you're going to be pulled by the storm. Those 3% of humanity that's working on this stuff, you're going to be pulled by their energy, um, whether you like it or not. <laughs> and um, which we're actually helping you out. So congratulations. You're lucky. Um, you, you can work, you can work through your inner demons and, and, and work on it. And if not, you can exit out if you want to, it's okay. It's okay. So anyways, things are going to get much more polarizing to test your true resonance. And people will show you who they truly are, okay, um, in these higher energies. So by completing the light grid through connecting the vortex points all around the world, it signifies the completion of Metatron's cube for planet Earth. So planet Earth is perfecting her Merkaba, just like we all are, up the higher energies into a fifth dimensional level. So yay. some yay! So some people will make it, 
others won't. I know Dolores Cannon has talked about this in her work about the, the new herb and the split. Um, Buddhism and Hinduism has talked about the fifth dimension and going into unity consciousness and our in interstellar future. That's the same thing. So um, I know like Christianity and, and those traditions have also talked about um, the golden age of humanity, kind of like, uh, what do you call it? Um, Rapture or the or yeah. thousand years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Talking mm -hmm. about the same thing, but uh, we're just not as dire and grim and dreary <laughs> as some religions portray right. it. But it's just the split. It's the split. And everyone's going to go to the reality. And they're not going to know any difference. So third dimension of people are not going to know any difference. Um, because they're not working on their awakening and ascension and they're not leveling up the energy. So they won't really notice a difference in their personal Mandela effects because they don't have those high evolving Merkabas. But the people who have those high evolving Merkabas and having their awakening and ascension and working on, uh, on them will know definitely what their experience is. It's like they know what love is. You know, it's not something that's to be studied. So um, everybody's getting, getting the reality that's perfect for them. So again, no judgment. Um, this is just how energy works. So remember, there are parallel versions of most everyone. So people who radiate at fifth dimension, unity consciousness will have an easier time living with Spaceship Earth in these higher dimensions and because everything manifests faster. And um, their awakening and ascension system, symptoms will kind of come up online. The six senses will come up online. Every time she levels up, they're going to level up too with her. Um, and it's going to be wonderful and easy for them to thrive because they know how to use the tools of the fifth dimension. Um, and for people who don't want to use these tools and they keep creating chaos and disaster for themselves because they're living out of fear um, and they haven't perfected or worked on those lessons, um, they're going to exit out one way or another. And that's okay too. So, um, you know, people, all the others that struggle hard to keep up with the new higher level curriculum, that will be their choice. So right. they're going to get a, a lower version um, of Earth. And you can go into Dolores Cannon's work for that. You can go into a lot of other traditions for that. Um, since you're infinite, anyways, there's really nothing to fear about the end of one cycle of the wheel of dharma because you're going to come back and do it again anyways <laughs> so, right and the other thing game. religion yeah religion or christianity anyway kind of makes it scary because it's the end of the road and it's like that final judgment where eternity you're deciding you know this one lifetime or in one but, lifetime <laughs> yeah yeah but but in actuality you know it's i i feel like you know f from one perspective if, if you're going to that higher dimension of course it looks like hell not to but from their perspective it would be like hell to, to move into those higher frequencies if, if they're not ready. So really, we go where we're most resonant and where we will be most comfortable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I had a session with somebody who was um, kind of wondering about um, the higher dimensions. And um, he was he was like, how come I can't get away with some of the crap I got away with before? You know, and yeah. he's like, well, you're in the higher dimensions now. It's going to bring up all the stuff that doesn't work. And so, like, well, I'm not having any fun. I wanted to keep doing that crap. I was like, well, you can't. You've got to find a healthier way to exist in these higher dimensions because what you are is going to come up. So if you're just putting out crap out there, that's what you're going to get back. Your tax evasion is going to come back to you. Um, <laughs> you know, you can't hide that kind of stuff. It's going to come back. You're going to have to resolve it. Um, if not, you you know, you're going to hate these newer energies and you're not going to thrive and have fun in it because you don't like the way the game has been rewritten. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we can have conversations about that, but it's out of our hands. This is the way it's, it's happening and the science to prove it. So, again, the definition of a Buddha is one who is awakened. So Mandela Effect, thank you very much for awakening. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, you know, we are... We realize that we live in a holographic reality that is responding to our commands. And again, ascension is to raise your energetic, energetic frequency by living the best version of you. And as a result, you positively affect yourself and those around you. And your inner bliss manifests a parallel reality that matches you. So leveling up your Merkaba in to Christ consciousness activates your six senses as you move towards Buddhahood and eventually 
if you choose to, cross the final doorway into nirvana. So again, each time that you change your perspective, you have about a subject of any kind, you will likely experience a slight variation in your reality, which is a sign of traveling between parallel realities and parallel people and parallel events. Much like you and I was talking about, whoa, we're in a different COVID reality because the restaurant that we were at <laughs> right. <laughs> has always been closed and we were just dining in there. <laughs> so we're not going to argue with the restaurant owner. <laughs> about her sanity so that's fine yeah. so um you know we're being conscious creators and it requires inner work and your external reality um that is agreed on reflections on what is inside so there's a couple of nuggets to take with you guys as we journey through this um with your awakening and ascension as we tune further into the fifth dimension so Back to the temple. Oh, this is at nighttime. That's this is at night. Isn't it pretty? It's completely gold. It's gold cover temple. And when they shine the light on it, it looks really beautiful. So, you know, when I do my, my QHHT sessions, um, and again, if everybody wants to kind of get their cheat code for Awakening and Ascension, you could do BQH um, to get your soul transcript and how to thrive in the fifth dimension and use these tools positively. Um, or you can go to DoloresCanon.com and find a practitioner. If you're in Seattle, you can find me. Um, there's a lot of different resources and out there to help you with this. So there's more than one way to get down the rabbit hole. But in my sessions, the oversoul in everyone typically says the same thing for the client. So I put it into these words. And the oversoul wants everyone to know that you've always been enough Use the gifts and the resources all around you to create the life you want to experience. A life full of joy and love and the spirit world will nudge you through synchronicity. You can do it. So the $1 trillion question, again, for everyone in the spiritual community, in whatever tradition brought you to this point, is do you have the fifth dimension of Merkaba that safely opens up Vault B and a one trillion dollar treasure. That's the question. And gosh, that it would cost a lot of money to get over to the sea, though, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so uh let me go here. Oh, here's yeah, another we need to image. Astral travel then, huh? Oh yeah, or biolocate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so awesome. Anyway. Wonderful presentation. That was so, 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 so cool. So much fun. Yeah. And I've got my Markova star seat bracelet on. <laughs> there you go. That is really so, yay, cool. Celebrating. That is really cool. So um, I'm actually going to take a hiatus. I've done like 26 book interviews. I'm going to take a hiatus for a while so I can finish book two of Buddhist Mandalas. And um, and just kind of just you know get back, <laughs> close the doors of reality, and get back into um, yeah. my my Zen place, so I can focus on the book and just focus. Because in these higher energies, you just don't have enough time to do anything, so you really have to focus and kind of shut out the noise. So um, I'm gonna go back into the studio and work on book two, and um, you know, and then kind of come out with book two and and do another round of book two and then go back and finish book three and then do another round and you know carry on but um this is a perfect way to end the segment for a little while is the one trillion dollar merkaba challenge which i think is just the best treasure hunt in the universe <laughs> isn't it yeah and i feel like you know it, we've got plenty of time to work on it so. oh yeah so when you get your next book and you're ready to come back whenever that is we're always here waiting and excited to, to hear what you have for us. Yeah, we'll learn a little bit more about ourselves. Absolutely. So thank you so much. You guys, check out our links below to her book, to her website, uh, to schedule a QHHT session with her if you're in the Seattle area. Um, and we'll have her back soon after she gets her... It's going to be a break from us, but not a break at all. You're going to be busy at work. Um, yeah. <laughs> it'll go by really fast. Before, you know, like, it felt like a month. <laughs> so yeah. it'll go by really fast. Absolutely. So lots of love, light, and unity to each and every one of you. And thanks again, Vaughn, for joining us. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.
be sure to check out the website at uotf.net. There you will find the live stream schedule displayed in your local time right there on the front page. Below that, you'll find links to take the Beyond Quantum Healing course at a discounted rate, purchase our book, Mandela Effect, Friend or Foe, in paperback or ebook, or to contact me to schedule a BQH session. At the top of the site, you'll find links to help support the work I do, access the free private forum where you can discuss organizing get-togethers in your area, Mandela Effects, and more. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you.